Hey everybody, Jeff here. So, time for another contest entry. There's a lot of contests going around, aren't there? Anyway, so this is for Ron Haggerty. He is uh, giving away that extra Black Flag album that he picked up from Chris Profrey. So it's kind of a combo between uh, Ron and Chris. Uh, Chris sent Ron some VCLT. Ron had already picked it up in the interim between the time that Chris said he was going to send something. So whatever, there's two copies. He's going to have pass one on, pay it forward. And so all he's asking for is for us to show our five top punk albums. My amount of punk that I have is slightly limited, and it is limited to uh, one particular genre, as you'll see for the most part in a minute. So yeah, so basically most of my teen years into the up into the mid 80s, I listened to mainly just metal, you know, everything that was hair and metal and spandex and all that stuff so punk was not really on my radar it wasn't until around the mid 80s when I had made the switch to basically devoting my life to being more I was listening just to Christian music at the time and Christian rock and so at that point you started kind of anything that had a hard rock beat or that was you know not light rock you kind of would get into and so I discovered a lot of the uh, punk bands in the Christian genre in the 80s and that's the stuff that I still have in my uh, vinyl collection I tried to kind of stick this with vinyl not that I have a whole lot anything else in, in CD anyway so the ones I do have are the majority of them are going to be in the Christian realm so you know hopefully I guess not a lot of people will be showing these I guess the first one I think and I put these in order based on when I discovered them actually so First off, I first discovered Undercover. Now this is their God Rules album. This is their second album, their first kind of major release. Their first one was kind of more independent. And I don't have that on vinyl, so I can't show you that. But anyway, this is the one I think I pretty much discovered. And they're a power punk band. You know, they got it's kind of poppy and punk. So and they were one of the more uh famous ones in the Christian realm. And they there's actually a reissue of one of their later albums, but in later years, they switched singers and in later years became more alternative, less punk. So the first few albums with the first singer, more punk, and then they kind of started going alternative more in the late 80s and stuff. So God Rules by Undercover. Now, second up with one of the next bands I discovered was One Bad Pig. Now, One Bad Pig had uh, a bunch of albums out in the 80s and early 90s, I guess, and then, you know, disappeared as a lot of bands do, and then they came back, and this is their, actually, their most recent album. It's probably been 10 years now, but they got back together and released this. As you can see, it's, a, you know, one of the first ones to reissue on vinyl. It's pretty pink. It's got autographs by all the guys there. So yeah, it's a great album. I love all the stuff by One Bad Pig. Their second album is in the process of being reissued on vinyl soon, so I will have that. Hopefully they'll continue on and, and do some more of their, of their stuff. But this is their more recent one. Great stuff. Again, it's kind of power punk. It's not really hardcore punk. Great stuff. You know, does hardcore count? Because I do have a lot of hardcore CDs. I won't go there. We're sticking with stunk that stuff that's more flat out punk. And I think the next one I probably discovered was Lust Control. And again, they put out a bunch of just raw, bootleggy type independent cassettes back in the day. Loved all that stuff. As you could tell from the title, you know, Lust Control, uh, they are very, very, very vocal on uh, sexual sins and things along that line, purity and along, you know, integrity when it comes to relationships and stuff. Now, again, they get back together many, many years later and they put out an official album and it eventually gets put on uh, vinyl also and it's on a cool color and so that's what this is and again this one is autographed it was a uh, I want to say this was a Kickstarter type program one of those fun self-funded campaigns that I participated in so anyway uh, it was great to see it come out on vinyl and maybe there's something more in the works but again they were kind of a band back in the day this is probably one of the more famous ones that went on to great things. Crucified is they were really raw, real punk, more punk than pop, than a pop punk. This is their first official 
release on a label. And at this point, the guitars started getting the sound to where they almost started becoming a, a metal type thrash, you know, proto punk, I guess, on what they call it. Vocally, still has the punk influence, but musically, they started becoming a bit heavier. And they progressed on each album. It just seems like they became a little more metallic. And, you know, aside from the vocal stylings, they kind of lost the overall punk feel. And they just, you know, I loved it as they went on. So I did show their first, one of their early cassettes had been reissued on a 7-inch vinyl. And it was raw punk. And I've shown that in our previous video, so I figured I'd show this one. They're still, Crucified's still known as one of the more popular punk bands in the uh, Christian realm. And here's Grave Robber. I've showed them before. They are definitely more of a horror punk uh very much sound like the misfits they have that sound and style they wear costumes and they're just you know a great band they are in the christian realm and there are christian symbolisms in here but they're not i don't call them real super preachy you would probably enjoy them whether you're into religion or not it is just great stuff with a horror theme and you know like I say, some spiritual connections that are really interesting, but you know, not real preachy. Great stuff. All right, so that was five. Now I'm going to throw in a sixth one because I realized that this is probably my all time favorite, all time favorite punk album. Again, this is going to be punk from the late 70s, from the underground UK scene that. To me, when you listen to it, it's like, I always think of punk as being more aggressive and barking out the vocals and everything, but I guess in certain circles, that doesn't necessarily make punk. Anyway, talking Adam Ant's first album. Now, his first album would be labeled as Punk of the Day. This is like 1979, you know, the underground UK scene, uh, Susie and the Banshees and all of them, all these bands that were rolling around together in those days. And this was be considered punk. They they had the look and everything. You know, I guess so were the bands like the Sex Pistols and stuff. So this was part of that scene. Of course, his second album became a little more a little a little more tribal and a, still had a punk feel, but a little less. And then the third album a little more pop. And then he went progressively pop from there. And so this is I mentioned this not too long ago as being one of my favorite most listened to albums of all time. I just I love this album. I love this era of Adam Ant. So Anyway, I won't bore you further with that. That's it. That's six. You got a bonus one there. So, uh, punk, I have some. Anyway, thanks for watching, and good luck to everybody who enters the contest, and we'll see you later. Rock on.